Good morning once again and welcome to The Breakfast to those who are just joining us. You've missed out on a whole lot, but uh, good to have you here. We're now moving into a conversation with regards to the National Identity Number, um, which uh, has uh, been extended. Uh, the yeah. deadline has been extended. And of course, uh, if you had been following the news stories, you must have seen also that it was suspended yesterday in Lagos because of the large crowds that gathered in uh, Alausa uh, to, of course, get themselves registered. The government had to, do a, had to have a rethink and extend the deadline a little further into the month of January. Um, we've uh, invited this morning to quickly speak with us, Dr. Emerie Agunwa, uh, to share his thoughts with us on this new development. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning to you. Thank you very much. Okay, but before we take on the first Thank question, just a, a quick notice that we will be visiting the conversation around the um, 2021 budget, uh, but we had to uh, step this conversation um, up for now. Uh, Dr. Agunwa, the decision to extend um, the uh, registration uh, period, why do you think that they are taking it because of all that has happened? Shouldn't they have thought of it uh, before now? Um, good morning, Felicity. You know, the conversation has, um, around the national identity number is quite complicated because... Uh, it's been arised, an ongoing conversation for a very long time, but there's, uh, there's information going around the blogs that is one of the necessary requirements for um, COVID-19 vaccine for the country. I'm sure you know that. Yeah, so um, documentation and the proper um, data for citizens is something that needs to be put in place. So that that's, uh, explains the rush a little bit to some sort. But also, also conversations as regards the extension uh, I don't think there should ever be a deadline because uh, we're, we're a country of 206 million and, uh, and we also need to understand that this is also a um, um, celebration period in the country, Christmas and co, New Year period. And um, the best thing to do is um, basically to extend the, 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 the deadline, but I actually shouldn't say it should be extension. It should actually be uh, opened up indefinitely. The more just create the awareness, let people go and register if that's the need. But putting the deadline and um, threatening people with the whole NCC um, block, um, line blockage right. is um, something I consider to be um, preposterous at the moment. Dr. Agumwa, I, I want your thoughts on this. You've just said you know there shouldn't be a specific date uh, for or a deadline. Um, but I'm sure you also are aware that the notice for NIN registration had been given a long time ago. The government had an earlier deadline that was eventually shifted. And then, of course, you know, this has happened. Um, you must also be aware of, you know, the Nigerian, the, the Nigerian in us, you know, to always leave things till the last minute till we, till we eventually get them done. The same thing with the BVN. You know, we also have the same issues with voters registration and all of that. Um, so can you really blame the government for taking the steps that are, you know, that they have taken now? And also, why would you, well, what would you say may be causing the urgency with NIN uh, registration? Is it a security issue? Is it really about, you know, getting all Nigerians under a database? Okay, so thank you very much. First of all, we have an agency called the uh, National Orientation Agency. When issues like this come up, uh, we have an agency that should sensitize the people, give us a good reason why we should do what we're doing. Okay, so there's absolutely no reason for the common Nigerian to go queue up and get another number that's totally not going to be useful. We've done BVM, we've done all manner of uh, data capturing in this country, and for some reasons we are asking questions. So, to what end? Um, is all this stuff we are doing, okay? And now we are back to this one. This is a necessary uh, requirement for every citizen to have a national identity number. Uh, but we are also dealing with um, um, why the urgency at the moment. Like I said earlier, there's a little bit of conversation going around some blogs that is one of the WHO requirements for for the uh, vaccination of the vaccines to a country. Okay, so. Um, and so we, you cannot deploy the same if the, the citizenry are not properly documented. Okay, so of necessity, there's pressure on the government to um, 
uh, to get these numbers settled up so that they can know who they are propensity to, that should be able to local government, to background checks and a couple of other things like that, okay? But why the urgency? We are not new to this country. At least all of us have been um, um, for decades or co around this country and we are asking the same question. Do, do, does the government not know the country enough to know that you have to sensitize the people, give them a good reason to leave what they are doing, to go queue up, or if we really care about getting these data, we have a lot of e-format, e-registration systems that should be a, some kind of data synchronization scheme between the BVM. BVM basically captures every information. Driver's license captures same information. Voters can capture same information. And we're asking, uh, except to say the ones who don't have BVM, the ones who don't have driver's license, the ones who don't have voter's registration, then go and um, do this. If not, we can sync all these data to in one and provide everybody with all their stuff if the data are valid. Okay, so there are a couple of things we are um, we are trying to fit in here. Uh, 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 a 21st century system and using an, uh, an analog um, ideology to run it. So all this stuff queuing up to get this stuff, I think, is a little bit too. Um, and stressful and you, you, uh, you, 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 you just said you just said moments ago that the federal government should um, leave the registration open ended. There should be no deadline. Well, there is a deadline yeah. again um, for those with um, subscribers with um, NIN uh, from 30th of December to the 19th of January, and for those that don't have either to February uh, 2021. And my question is. Is it they're not listening to the people or there is a specific reason that has been undisclosed and probably will remain so for this uh, extension of deadline as against removal? Okay, so uh, basically we know the government, does, there's, a, there's a massive gulf between the government and the people, okay? It's, it's, it's something quite massive, okay? There's a hard, mass, massive disconnect between the government and the people. So. We are asking the same question. Same question is, if it's a requirement that every Nigerian should do, do we know why we are doing it? Or you must you use threats of blocking our SIM? Basically, an average Nigerian who is outside. I have a couple of friends who are outside the country, and their lines are basically not uh, um, uh, available. Or like they, they have to come back and a couple of things like that. So you want to put them under pressure. So suddenly, people are under pressure to get something that is not going to add, add um, value to the immediate um, circumstances where they're dealing with. Okay, now I understand the rust, like I said, there are a couple of reasons that the government is not communicating. What is the National Registration Agency doing? They should give us the reasons, they should put up five FAQ questions, frequently asked questions on their website, why we should do that, create an enabling platform, so, um, um, around partnership with private sector, database private sector consulting firms. I'm going to say, help us set up this, help us set up this. Okay, it must be easy, that's what it's all about, okay? And um, the numbers are important. This is not, we're not, we're not trying to say it's not important, but I think uh, putting a deadline on extension is something that um, puts pressure on people. Give us a good reason and tell us to work in when we have time and we do it, okay? The whole rush, and we're also, we also passing through the shutdown of the second wave of COVID. Now, the, the, the whole rush of the thousands of people in the place trying to get their stuff. And we, all, we won't pretend that we're not hearing the news of when there's rush hour like, like this, it enables corruption. People are asking for facts and bribes to ensure that you get be the first to get it. So uh, uh, that all this stuff, uh, just a little bit of wrong policy becomes an enabler for all manner of uh, wrong vices in the in the community. And that's basically what I'm trying to so do. If we remove the time frame, we, we, we remove these enablers for, for and all these other negative biases. Dr. Agonwa, I'm, I'm sure, you know, both of us will agree that the National Orientation Agency has um, almost been non-existent in the last decade or even, even more. Um, their state offices are you know, a shadow of themselves. You, you can barely even see any work being done there. I, I just left Enugu, and Enugu's uh, National Orientation Agency office is, is a, it's a shame. Um, so, but I, I want, you know, your thoughts on the NIMC. Do you believe that the NIMC as, a, as an agency has the capacity 
to handle the registration of these millions and millions of Nigerians, um, if we're being honest. Looking at you know the logistics that is required, looking at the staff that is required, are they really capable of handling uh, this you know number of people? Um, there is you know the um, angle that they are also trying to go digital. Uh, but in the same breath of going digital, they ask you to register online and then take the same uh, printed um, uh, paper, you know, to their offices. And so it, it still doesn't uh, end up being digital. So do you think the NIMC can handle these things? Are they capable? So uh, I think I think the NI they don't have the capacity at the moment that we know that they don't have the capacity. We are a country that is growing 206 million Okay, yeah, I mean, at least we should have at least uh, um, ad hoc staff. Okay, that's a massive um, rec um, recruitment right now for ad hoc staff. At least, at least um, one million persons, if we want this thing to sort to sort out. There should be at least one million persons working with the with the commission right now to get these things going. At least, if we if we must if we are going to get all these things sorted out within the next uh, three to four months, um, we need to we need to um, do a lot of um, um, volunteer work and ad hoc recruitment, a couple of things to fuse this. We know they don't have the capacity. Then, if you don't have the capacity, how do you put yourself under that kind of pressure? We don't have the technical infrastructure to do that. We don't have the internet infrastructure to do that. We don't even have the physical uh, space and support. Um, we don't have um, modalities to ensure for um, emergencies. And what if somebody faints in that place? What if a lot of things, and these things should work hand in glove, okay? All right, Dr. Agua, let, me, let me interject. In the interest of time, let me interject and quickly ask you about the COVID-19 um, protocol that's been flouted uh, so randomly. Um, do you think that, we still have a deadline, so I think we should speak in that context. Do you think that P, uh, there would be a way that the government can ensure that the protocols are not broken, even as people continue to push to have their cards and their numbers. Okay. Absolutely. There's a way of making can ensure that protocols are not broken by ensuring that yes, the time frame is removed. Okay. Because whenever there's a time frame, there must be rush. In a place that can necessarily accommodate like 100 persons and you're expecting 2,000 persons to walk into that place within a very short period of time, there is absolutely no way you can you can ensure for uh, COVID nineteen protocols to be implemented. You have to ensure for the two meter uh, two meter distance. You have to ensure for uh, who provides the hand sanitizers, who provides for the hand washing, who provides for for all these other stuff. There's a lot of logistics involved in this, and I know that uh, we are basically asking the wrong um, trying to make Nigeria become a global entity overnight. But the question is, if we want to do something right, uh, do something we we can still do it very right. Okay, so uh, um, the, there's no way presently except we reduce the rush. If you put deadlines on people and 2,000 persons come into a place that should necessarily accommodate 50 to 100, then there's no way, absolutely no way where, that you can implement that. Everybody be against the risk of, uh, 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 faces the risk of COVID uh, infection. I mean, there's a whole lot going on right now. So, All right, Dr. Think, um, I'll go well. Um, that's the much time we'll let us at this time. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. All right. Um, interesting submission uh, there. I, I do believe that they will still extend it again. It's not. It's not. Because it's not it's even possible reasonable. For I'm, the, um, I, I confirmed that my MTN works, but I don't know about my Glow if I it I, is I just connected it to. Uh, my line. Uh, I'll try and check that out today. But there's a lot of persons that don't even have the time to go and do this thing. And that technology part of it, I think they should embrace it and make it easier. People don't need to go to an office physically to have um, yes. these things done. You can do it where, wherever you, you are. Just... There, there, there is, you know, they, they keep using the hashtag digital Nigeria, you know, and at the same time expecting people to gather at their offices to get registered. Um, it's, it's not logical, it's not possible, it's not reasonable to expect that, you know, 100 million plus Nigerians, even 50 million Nigerians will be registered uh, by the 19th of January or by the first, you know, um, first week of February in 2021. It's not possible. If you look at the number of people that can possibly get registered every day, uh, the, I think the body had what said 500,000. What about the people in the very remote, remote areas, communities right? that so needs these mobile the, numbers to get access to basic they, things? They initially had
had said about 500,000, um, um, I think, weekly, or, or um, I think so. And even if you increase that number to 3 million, it still doesn't you know, meet up with the um, number of people that need to be registered. Let's see what happens in the coming days um, with this. There is, there is, there is a failure. It's, the government agencies, and this is what I have said in the past, that um, the Nigerian government agencies fail and then make citizens suffer for their own failures. Uh, the NIMC, yes, I agree that Nigerians have their own, you know, behavioral characteristics that, you know, we're lazy wait sometimes. For, wait for the wait last minute. Wait for last minute, minutes, yeah, <laughs> and get that. But if you make it a little bit easier for people to do get these things done, it may not be so bad. Um, and also, the conversation about synchronizing all the information we already have from our BVNs, to our voters' cards, to our national identity cards. You want to cards, take people's to, job away. To, there's so much of it. Why can't all these things be seen? Okay, you want to take people's job away. <laughs> when I got my international passport, I'm sure I did give the same data. You know, fingerprint, passport, um, phone numbers, all of it. It's all there. You know, so if you, if you simply can reach out to telcos, reach out to, you know, the passport offices, immigration, everybody has the information already. Synchronize it somehow, some way. Well, make let's it a see what happens. Let's Hello. What happens. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.